Margaret Tolev writes an article for Bloomberg preparation for the State of the Union and maybe suggests that President Trump will be bold and make actual executive order announcements tonight. Should we expect that? I think what's been sort of uh, foretold here is that the president might attempt to declare a state of emergency along the southern border to build his border wall. Now, that would create an immediate court challenge. It would be challenged in Congress. It would sort of move the debate onwards, which on the one hand would allow Congress to get on with its other business. It would sort of move the issue into the courts. Uh, on the other hand, it would sort of perpetuate this uh, extraordinary argument that led to the longest government shutdown on record. Um, I think that's likely. I don't know that it's a guarantee. Yeah. The other thing that we've seen as a sort of uh, a guess is that there'll be some movement towards bipartisanship on prescription drug pricing, on yeah. uh, infrastructure spending, on a few other things. We've seen a changed House. It is a House Democratic, as I said in my opening. Do they sit on their hands? I, I mean, the, the, the body language that we're going to see tonight, the pageantry, he's going to come in, the justices, maybe even uh, Ms. Ginsburg, Justice Ginsburg, uh, will be there as ill as she is. Do the Democrats sit on their hands or do they applaud nicely? I suspect you see the traditional applause at the beginning of the speech and the end of the speech. There may be one or two, especially in those bipartisan moments where he calls for priorities yeah. that the Democrats can agree with. I suspect most of them will applaud there, but uh, he'll probably also do some of his general referring to sort of the, the chaos and darkness and the you know, hordes of immigrants coming across the border, and I'd be shocked if any Democrats actually applauded that. Jacob, how much of what the president says will be simply statements, words, versus actually feeding through to a political strategy? Well, I think a lot of it will be statements and words. We haven't seen a sort of coherent, long-term political strategy. This is a very uh, responsive, very sort of uh, quick-moving White House in a way, but also not one that, that tends to follow through with long-term strategies. The Office of Legislative <clears throat> Affairs tends to sort of follow from the president's uh, instincts rather than uh, following a main strategy. To the extent that they've made major legislative progress, it's come from the House and Senate. It's come from the sort of the, the criminal justice agreement over uh, between the Democrats and the Republicans last year, the Republicans only tax cut bill the year before that. That's been where the momentum has been legislatively. How much do you expect the president also to focus on the economy in this speech, just given where he is in the polls at the moment? I suspect it'll be a pretty major theme. Uh, the January jobs report was fairly strong, at least in the top line numbers. There are some other, there's some nuances there. Income growth isn't very good, but um, the president can point to 300 well, something thousand jobs created in January. And I think that will, that will give him a talking point that is a fairly strong one. And, and Gene Frieda, to go to the markets and the PIMCO expertise in bonds and frankly, how bonds come over to equities, this president's going to be able to do once again a victory lap on instability in October, in no, December rather, and all of a sudden now we got ourselves almost on the edge of a bull market again. He's going to be able to tout decent markets, right? I mean, I would, I would think so. I think, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the Powell put. I think it's also important <clears throat> to recognize the Trump put and how the equity market oh, like you know, might have made him behave a little bit better than he would have otherwise. So from that perspective, I think, you know, we will be looking for signs that he's doing the victory lap on trade ahead of what is likely to be a, a summit with Xi at the end of this month. Similarly, that he's not, uh, you know, starting another round to the shutdown. Um, it would be great to see something on infrastructure, but I think we've all kind of given up on that, unfortunately. <clears throat> Have we, Jacob? But we've given up on that? Infrastructure has almost become a joke. Uh, the the, the no, idea no, that well, excuse sort of me, Jacob. Let me interrupt, okay? <laughs> you need to go down 59th Street in New York, and then you will officially understand it's a joke. Continue. <laughs> I, I, will, I will grant you that. My, my point is that the idea of infrastructure being a, uh, something that this Congress and this president could agree yeah. on has become a running joke because Infrastructure <clears throat> Week has been something that's been touted by the White House as something that'll happen. We'll agree a big infrastructure package. And in principle, it's something that everyone agrees on. But in the reality of it, in terms of how Trump would prefer to invest in infrastructure with sort of public-private partnerships and how the Democrats would prefer to uh, invest directly in it, I think there's still a lot of daylight between them.